right, it is August 28th, 2024, and this is commuting with Birdie, because I'm normal, and I have a day job, a regular job while I'm still trying to live my dreams. You know, you got to, let me tell you this right now, you have to do something, anything, even if it's teeny tiny, every day towards your higher goal, whatever that is. All right, it doesn't have to be a lot, but just something. So like for me, these videos make me feel like I'm doing something. It gives me practice in talking, practice in my mannerisms, practice in being more succinct, succinct and my message flow. So I'm getting practice, but I'm putting it also up on YouTube because oh, I've got to do it, right? And knowing that people might be enjoying my videos or... Uh, looking forward to my videos then that in my head goes I've got to post not to disappoint those people and you know what the funny thing is I don't know I mean I know people are watching my videos like right I'm getting views consistent views but are they waiting for my videos no but I pretend they are because that's how I actually can get things done so I used to film my workouts with my daughter because <laughs> that made me get them in by myself when I wasn't teaching a class or something. So I would film it knowing, A, I would have to push myself as hard as I could in those videos because people were counting on me to push myself. And if I don't push myself, well then obviously my clients are gonna push themselves, right? Everything starts with you. My favorite quote out of You're a Badass by Jen Sincero is, it's not your fault that your parents F's you up. But it is your fault if you stay effed up. And that quote, I immediately sent to my kids. And I said, look, y'all might be screwed up because of me. But it's your fault if you stay screwed up because of me, right? Stay screwed up because of yourself. <laughs> that we choose, like after we're grown, after we're gone, we choose our life. Yes, until you're 18 or yes, until you're no longer under somebody's hold. And I know 18 is not that anymore, right? Some people are under their parents' thumbs for their whole life. And others who have gone out, their parents no longer talk to them or they don't want to talk to their parents. So everything starts with you. And I know that's for me. Okay. So all my material, all my videos, the reason it is so much about me and my life is because A, that's all I know. And because I know it starts with me, I have to do it first. I can't go out there and tell you all, give you advice or pointers or talk ideas and theories and concepts if I have not tried it on for size for myself. If I'm just repeating what other people are repeating because it sounds good. So I try really hard not just to repeat what other people are saying. I try to come up with my own version of that idea or my own test or my own theory and then I draw from that and I pass that on but it's always because I know it starts with you again I have got to start with myself example being an example whether you know it or not being an example is huge and let me tell you why I learned this lesson I learned it a lot but with my own kids for instance my, I think he was maybe two at the time, but it was laundry time. You know what he did? He jumps, he crawl, crawls up, crawls up the washing machine. Then he, he, my, this child of mine climbed counters tops at like 12 months, 15 months. Like he was a monkey. Well, he is actually born in the year of the monkey. Isn't that funny? So am I. Okay. That's a different point, but he crawled up onto the washing machine, grabbed off the the shelf above the laundry room, in the laundry room, grabs the detergent, takes off the lid, and is ready to start pouring it into the cup. Now, I had never sat him down. I had never said, okay, now kids, this is the laundry. Here's the detergent. Here's what you do, because all my kids were four and under, you know? So in my head, I'm not ready to teach them that. Um, so he knew what to do. And then my younger two girls, when I would uh, had my business, Bad Last Fitness, I was on my computer all the time with the Bad Last Shred. It was all computer based um, and networking and community. So 
my 18 month old, my 12 month, as soon as they could sit at the table, they would open up my laptop and they would just pretend that they were typing. Not because I'd ever actually taught them that, but because that's what they saw in my behavior. So kids learn to model the adults in their lives' behavior. Their teenage, the siblings in their lives' behavior. That's all they know. They're not listening. They're not listening. Because otherwise they would do everything you said, right? So they're not listening, they're watching. And so if your words and your actions don't match up, then that creates anxiety in children. It creates a disconnect, a confusion. Like, uh, wait, you said do this, but you're doing this. But what? That's not fair. You know, I put my shoes in my room, but you can just throw yours in the middle of the room, right? So we have to be the example that we want our other people around to follow suit. And that's in everything. If you're a coach, be willing to get, I know you were one time, once upon a time, a star athlete at your high school, right? But if you're a coach, then get in there, practice with the boys. Do something more than just sitting around doing commands, right? Because they're going to listen to you when you get down with them on the field. When you practice with them, when you show them, when you teach them, when you tell them stories. More, everyone is more likely to do what you would like them to do if they understand why they're doing it. If they know it's for their benefit, if they don't see that there's going to be a benefit at the end, then they're not going to work as hard as they could. If they knew and saw, okay, this is going to happen to me if I keep doing this. I will be a better player if I go to practice and practice perfectly. Everything starts with you. Okay. Second thing. All of us are so uniquely different. We're all born with our own personalities. And I know this because I have five kids, all right? And I have five sisters, so I have, there are six of us. We're all pretty much different. But I never really realized that with my sisters. I noticed it more in my kids. So my first son, who is ADD, but he's more the, he's not the hyperactive. His brain is hyperactive and he's constantly, but it's, he's not physically. Uh, going all the time. So he's a, the, I can't remember what that one is called. Anyways, so, but doing homework with him was like pulling freaking teeth. Like pulling teeth, pulling teeth. Like it would take four or five hours just for him to do. And I use this, this um, example because it's, everybody in kindergarten has to do this, right? You learn to write your A's. You learn to write your A's by doing A, A, you know, on those line papers. And so Dante, my oldest, it was pulling teeth, all right, so forever. And then it was just like, we did it, we're done. I don't care what it looks like, you did it, great job. Then my daughter was born, and I figured she might be, you know, different, because some have to be different. And she was my perfectionist like my perfectionist like everything had to be perfect so much so that again this is a girl in kindergarten and this is where they don't learn they don't always model your behavior sometimes they are coming up with their own ideas they are coming up with their own behaviors and my daughter what she did was a erase it a erase it and I asked her I said Erin what are you doing you're supposed to do the A's all the way across you know and you get better as you practice and go down the line and she goes, but it's not perfect. And I was like, they don't all have to be perfect. You know, your teacher knows that you're learning and that you're, so you don't have to have all the A's across perfect. But so again, it was very hard to break that habit for her. And this is all five years old, y'all. Kindergarten, kindergarten, kindergarten. They have all this already in their heads, right? Already they have their unique, innate, their innate characteristics. We're all born with them, right? Our own characteristics. Okay, so then Ethan, who's my third, who I was just talking about, he's the one that was climbing everywhere at 15. As soon as he could climb, he was climbing up the door jam. He was like everywhere he was climbing. Okay. And so homework with him, and he also has been diagnosed with ADD, ADHD, but he's more like me, a hyperactive and Yes, so the way he did it, he'd come home from school, 
Same line paper, same letter A. There you go. A, 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 A. I'm done. <laughs> and I'm like, well, it's done. I mean, he did it in five minutes. It's done. The assignment's complete. The A's are all terrible. <laughs> but he's done. And I was like, wow. So he gets it done, but he doesn't give a crap that his A's are getting better on each line. He was just like, hey, 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 hey. And I laugh because <laughs> that is just so, uh, that's not me either, right? So all of them had their own distinct way that they did homework. And again, at five years old, if you watch your kids, they'll show you who they are. They'll show you what they're gonna be, what, what, how their minds work. They'll show you because they don't know how to hide it yet. They're not hiding it. They're not looking to be like, oh yes, okay, I need to do it this way. No, they're just gonna do it the way their brain says to do it and what they think is the right way. And then I had my fourth animal. She has a cognitive cognitive disability. Just like me, she has um, a lower IQ that puts her right under average. So she's in some general ed classes, but she's in life skills. And that was another completely new concept for me. I was like, wait, you know, I thought maybe my fourth would somewhere be like the three. And then now I've had my fifth, my youngest. She is now 10. She's in fifth grade. And she's almost like a little bit of everyone. Like all of my kids. She's a very brilliant. She's emotionally intelligent. She's kind of like all of my kids wrapped into one. So that's interesting. But we need to, so, when you know your kids, you're then able to, you know, let the teachers know how they are, what makes them thrive, what doesn't make them thrive. And then I loved the questions when my, uh, when the, my kids' teachers would say, what is one thing you would like me to focus on with your child, or you would like your child to learn this year? And when my perfectionist, uh, Erin, my number two, my first girl, in second grade, her teacher asked me that. And I had to think, because it wasn't like the general things, because she was smart, she did the work, she was a hard study, like she did what she had to do to make the grades. And so I knew it wouldn't have to be anything about that or a subject. And so I thought about it for a minute, and I said, you know what? Here's what I want her to learn. That you don't have to be perfect at everything. That not everything is going to be perfect. And that's okay. Do your best. I wanted her to learn that it was okay to do your best. Because I could tell that if she stayed a perfectionist, if she didn't learn that not being perfect was okay and not always having everything, all her ducks in a row was going to be okay, then that was going to be worse down the road. So she definitely still has, oh, she studies like crazy, she works really hard, and she's learned. And now she's a junior, no, she's a senior at A&M now. She's double majoring in economics and applied mathematics. She just got 